Welcome to my bake escape. This week, I'm excited to share the recipe for a delicious brown butter pear cake. Pumpkin and apples tend to take center stage during the fall, but the pear is also a delicious fall fruit. This cake is a bit more of an advanced recipe, but please don't feel intimidated. A few of the components can be made in advance to help make the process feel less daunting. I have provided chapter notes in the description of this video for your convenience. In this video, I'm going to show you how to poach pears, how to make a delicious moist brown butter cake from scratch. I will provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to make two delicious buttercreams, and then show you how I fill, frost, and decorate this cake. I'll also share some of my tips and tricks of cake baking and decorating. I hope you follow along. For the full recipe, visit mybakeescape.com and be sure to follow me on Instagram and Pinterest at mybakeescape. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate the support. The first step of this recipe is to poach the pears. For this recipe, I use Bartlett pears and I make sure that they are nice and firm. If the pears are too ripe, they can fall apart during the poaching process. To prep the pears for poaching, I use a vegetable peeler to remove that thin skin from the pear. Once the pear has been peeled, I carefully slice the pear right down the center. I want to make sure that the stem is still attached to one half of the pear. Then to remove the seeds, I don't use a specific tool, just a small spoon and I run it around the edge of the core of the pear where the seeds are and I just make sure that the circle is nice and even so it leaves the pear looking very nice. I am using five pears for this recipe so that will give me 10 halves total. You can do this step a few days in advance. And if you do, just make sure that you keep the poached pears in an airtight container in the refrigerator. The poaching liquid only requires a few ingredients, including this spiced pear liqueur. This has pear brandy, pear juice, and spices, and it is delicious. It smells incredible and it just adds a layer of flavor to this cake. If you prefer not to use it, you can omit it from the cake, but I highly recommend it. You will also need whole cloves, a cinnamon stick, a little bit of salt, water, granulated sugar, and you'll need to combine all of these ingredients into a large saucepan and bring to a low simmer. Once the sugar has dissolved completely and the mixture is simmering, this is the time to add the pear halves. Carefully add the pear halves to this liquid. Be careful because it is very hot. You can use a large spoon or even tongs if you're very careful to add these. Just try not to burn yourself. At first I worried because I thought maybe this was too many pear halves for this pan and I didn't want to overcrowd the pan, but it actually worked out okay. There was enough liquid to cover all of the pears. As they simmered in the liquid, I just took some time to gently move the pears around, kind of submerging them in the liquid. I just want to make sure that they each have time to bathe in that delicious poaching liquid. Thank you. 
after about 10 to 12 minutes, I decided to remove the pears. I don't want to leave them too long because they will start to fall apart and I want these to hold their shape for what I need them for in the cake. So using a large spoon, I start to remove the halves, trying to keep as much liquid in the pan as possible. And then once the pears are removed, I went ahead and tasted this liquid and it was delicious. So the next step is to reduce this down to a simple syrup. So I let this continue to cook for about 12 to 15 minutes. And you'll notice after some time, it does darken up a little bit in color and it is slightly thicker. So once the simple syrup is done, I make sure to let it cool completely. And then I transfer it to a storing container, I used a large mason jar. The next step is to brown butter. I am using a total of five sticks of unsalted butter, which is one and a half cups. And to brown the butter, you want to melt the butter over a medium heat until it begins to simmer and cook down and you'll notice that it starts to turn a different color like an amber color and you want to be careful make sure to give it a mix every now and then Once it reaches the stage, make sure to keep mixing it and you'll know it's done when it starts to turn a toasty golden brown and you smell caramel nutty aroma coming from it, that means it's done. So you want to remove it from the heat immediately and transfer it to a heat proof bowl and you see all those brown bits there let this cool down completely you need it to be almost solidified to use it in this recipe so just let it come to room temperature you can even chill this in the refrigerator a few days in advance and this is the consistency you're looking for all of those brown specks are going to add so much flavor to the cake The next step is to make the cake. For the cake, you will need all-purpose flour, buttermilk, four whole eggs, brown butter, vanilla, cornstarch, brown sugar, granulated sugar, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. I start by combining the dry ingredients. So to the flour, I add the baking soda. Followed by the baking powder. Then the salt and cornstarch. I whisk these ingredients together and then set them aside and move on to the wet ingredients. For the wet ingredients, you will need the brown butter, four eggs, granulated sugar, brown sugar, vanilla extract, and buttermilk. I use a large bowl for this. I transfer the brown butter to the bowl and then to the brown butter I add the sugars. And using my hand mixer I combine these, whip them or cream them together for about three minutes until the mixture is light and fluffy and pale in color and you'll see the difference here. You'll see how fluffy it is and how much paler it is. So now I add the eggs and mix those in. Then I add the vanilla extract and mix that in. I'm 
I'm going to add the flour and buttermilk in batches, starting with the flour mixture and ending with the flour. So I add about a third of the flour, mix that in. Then I add half of the buttermilk, mix that in. Add another third of the flour, mix that in. Add the rest of the buttermilk, mix that in, followed by the rest of the flour, and mix until it is all combined. And that is the brown butter cake batter ready to go into the cake pans. You can see specks of the brown butter in the batter and that is gonna add so much flavor to this cake. The next step is to prepare the cake pans for baking the cake. I use these heat strips. They ensure that the cakes bake evenly in the oven. I've had these for a long time and I like them because they have this Velcro attachment here. They wrap around the cake pans pretty easily, but they have to soak in water for about 15 minutes before using them. So I place them in a bowl, soak them for 15 minutes while I prep the cake pans. For this cake, I am using three eight inch round cake pans and I like to make sure that my cakes release from the pan and to do that I have this method of greasing and flouring my cake pans so I start by adding a little bit of unsalted room temperature butter to each of the pans and then using a paper towel I just make sure to coat the entire bottom edge sides of the pan with butter then I use non stick cooking spray and spray every part of the inside of the cake pan after that I add flour and I carefully tap the edge all around the sides of the cake pan distributing that flour so it coats the inside and bottom nice and evenly Once the cake pans are ready to go, it's time to add the batter and to ensure that each cake is the same size, I like to use a food scale and measure out how much batter I add to each cake. So for this cake, I added about 670 grams of batter to each cake pan. Once the batter is in the pan, I use a rubber spatula to just carefully spread the batter all around the bottom and the edges of the pan to make sure it is even. And an extra little tip that I suggest is once you spread that cake batter around the pan, just lift the whole pan and drop it from about a foot above your working station and this will help spread the batter evenly and will also release some of those bubbles. 
now that the cake batter is in the pans and these heat strips have been soaking for 15 minutes it's time to wrap them around the outside of the pan now these heat strips will help keep the cake from burning on the edges and being raw in the middle so the fact that they soaked in water keeps that outer edge of the pan a little cooler allowing the center of the cake to cook at the same kind of speed as the edges so these work really well to ensure that my cakes are also baked flat and I don't have to cut so much excess like a dome that sometimes forms when you bake cakes these are going to go in a 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated Fahrenheit oven for about 38 to 45 minutes it really just depends on your oven but I would suggest checking for doneness around the 35 minute mark while the cake is baking I'm going to move on to the next step and that is making the ermine frosting or ermine buttercream this is also known as a boiled milk frosting or a flour frosting and you will need milk vanilla granulated sugar all-purpose flour and a little bit of salt you're also going to need some butter but for this part we're going to combine the granulated sugar with the all-purpose flour and the salt mix that together Once those have been combined, add in the milk and carefully whisk until the milk and the flour is completely dissolved into the milk and there are no lumps. This could take a few minutes because you really want to make sure there are no lumps in this step. Then you're going to cook this over a medium heat until it comes to a boil and you're going to boil it for about 10 minutes until it is a nice, nice thick paste consistency. Once it starts to bubble up like this, you want to go ahead and continue to keep an eye on it. This does have milk, which can scorch, so you want to make sure to keep stirring it so that it doesn't burn on the bottom. And you're going to let this cook, like I said, for about 10 minutes until it is nice and thick. Once it reaches this consistency, you want to remove it from the heat and transfer it to a heat safe bowl. And you're going to let this cool to room temperature, then cover with plastic wrap and let it chill completely in the refrigerator. You can complete this step a few days in advance as well and just keep this in the refrigerator. This is just step one of two parts to this ermine buttercream recipe. The, the next step will be later on down in this video. So the cakes have baked for about 42 minutes and I test by lightly tapping the top. If it springs back up, that means it is baked through. I remove the cake from the oven and transfer to a cooling rack. I let them sit at, and cool down for about 10 minutes and then I remove the band and I carefully using a butter knife just run the butter knife along the edge of the cake to make sure it is released from the pan also give it a little shake and you can see that the cake is released from the pan and I carefully turn it over and let it cool completely on the cooling rack as you allow the cakes to cool in the pan on the cooling rack, you'll see that the cake starts to pull away from the edge of the pan. I still like to give it a little shake to make sure that it is not stuck to the pan and then I flip out onto the cooling rack. You wanna let your cakes cool completely. You do not want them to be warm at all when you're decorating and you can make these cakes a few days in advance, wrap them in plastic wrap and place in the refrigerator. You can also freeze them and use them within a month. Now it's time to finish the ermine buttercream. The base has chilled completely and look at how thick the consistency is now. That is what you want it to look like. So to make the buttercream, you need two sticks of room temperature butter along with some vanilla extract. Start by whipping the butter for about three minutes until it is light and fluffy. Then 
then add the vanilla extract and mix in. With the mixer on, you're gonna add about a tablespoon of the ermine base and mix well after each addition. You're gonna do this until you use all of that paste-like ermine base and then you're gonna whip this until it is light and fluffy for about three to five minutes. And this is what the ermine buttercream looks like after set aside and now it's time to make the american style buttercream for this you'll need two sticks of unsalted room temperature butter powdered sugar salt vanilla extract and i'm also using a little bit of that pear liqueur and some of the poaching liquid start by creaming the butter for two to three minutes until it is light and fluffy Then add the salt and the vanilla extract and mix in. Next you're going to add the powdered sugar and starting with the hand mixer on low, start incorporating the powdered sugar into the butter mixture. Once you see that it has all been absorbed into the butter, you can then whip on a higher setting for two to three minutes until it's creamy. And you'll notice it is a little thick, so you're gonna to wanna to add some liquid. That is why I added some of the poaching liquid from the pears and a little bit of that pear liqueur. My trick to making a delicious, not too sweet American buttercream is adding a lot of flavors like the vanilla, the pear liqueur, and the poaching liquid, and salt. Salt is key to toning down that sweetness. And this is what it looks like. It's super creamy and fluffy and delicious. Make sure to taste the buttercream if it needs a little bit more salt or it might be a little too like thin and needs to be a little thicker, you can add a little bit more powdered sugar and mix that in. I also added a little bit of caramel. You can make caramel from scratch and I have a recipe for that. But for this, I decided to use a high quality store-bought one and I used this salted caramel from Trader Joe's. This is gonna give a little bit of color to the frosting and just a little bit extra of that salted, sweet caramel flavor. It's almost time to start assembling the cake, but first I have to prep the pears. So I do want to add some of these poached pears to the filling. So I just take a few of the pear halves and I slice them up into bite-sized pieces. And then I prep my piping bag. I love this piping bag, and this is the tip I use every time I make a cake. It is the 809 Attico round large piping tip. So I place the tip at the bottom of my piping bag, make sure that it is right where it needs to be. And then to fill the bag, I just turn it inside out at the top. Make sure that I have a big enough space to start adding the American buttercream. So for this cake, I am using the American buttercream for the outside as well as to create a edge, um, a dam on the edges of the cake as I fill the cake. And then the ermine buttercream is gonna go inside the cake along with those chunks of pear for the filling. So to fill the piping bag, I just use a spatula to get that buttercream inside, give it a shake, twist it, and lightly add pressure to push that buttercream through to the top. Twist that end of the bag and set it aside. I use this acrylic 10 inch cake base, but you can use any type of cake base you like. And I also have this round, turntable that spins it's amazing it comes with this non-slip um, p 
piece of material to keep the cake stable and in place as I decorate. Anytime I decorate a cake, I always add a little bit of buttercream to the cake plate. This will help ensure that the cake itself sticks to that cake plate and doesn't move around as I am filling it and frosting it. I also use a large offset spatula. This is what I use to ice the cake and I also use a bench scraper which I will show later in the video. So I start by placing one of the cake layers on the cake plate making sure it is right in the center and then I pipe in that edge. This serves as a dam to hold all of the filling inside. So I pipe a nice edge around the cake and then I add some of that poaching liquid. This is a simple syrup. This adds a layer of flavor to the cake and it also ensures that the cake is moist. Next, I add a layer of that ermine buttercream. Make sure to spread that all around to the edge. Then I add a good amount of the poached pears. You want to be careful. You want to be careful when adding the filling to a cake. You might think, "Oh, I want so much filling." And yeah, I like filling too. But if you add too much, it will start to ooze out of the side of the cake and it will make the cake very wobbly as you're trying to frost it. So, I would say in this instance a little less is better because you don't want to have to deal with your filling squishing out of the sides as you're trying to smooth it as you're trying to frost the outside once the first layer of filling is done you want to go ahead and carefully add the next cake layer and then repeat the process I like to remove that darker layer on the tops of the cake just so that it makes the inside once you cut that slice it looks really nice if it doesn't have that dark crust in between the layers so I use a serrated knife and I carefully just cut the very top of the cake as evenly as possible and as a bonus you get to eat those scraps and they are delicious I also add a little bit of that simple syrup to the final layer of the cake and carefully place it on the top and carefully make sure that it is even press it down a little bit when frosting a cake you always want to start with what is known as a crumb coat it is a light thin layer of frosting that you cover the entire cake with and then you chill the cake then once it's chilled, you bring it out and you continue to frost it until you reach the look that you're looking for. I always like to use this piping bag to pipe frosting on the layers of the cake. And then I use the offset large spatula to just start moving and spreading that buttercream all over the cake. I wanna make sure that every part of the cake is covered with a thin layer of this frosting. This cake is going to chill in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes after I add the crumb coat. And the crumb coat will serve to collect all of the crumbs of cake. And it will also seal in the moisture, ensuring that the cake stays nice and moist and fresh while it's chilling in the refrigerator. So to frost a cake, just use a large 
offset spatula like I do here and just add a little bit of buttercream at a time, moving it around carefully, trying not to push too much or too hard and being careful around the top and the edges of the cake because this is cake and it will crumble and tear apart. So you just wanna be gentle and take your time. Once I have a layer of the frosting on the cake, I use this bench scraper to just take away the excess buttercream and it really helps to smooth it out along the side and the top of the cake. Once the crumb coat is on the cake, I chill this cake in the refrigerator for 30 minutes, remove it and add another layer of frosting, repeating the process. The acrylic cake board is really thin, so if I put it straight on the shelf in my refrigerator, it will be really hard to remove it. So I like to put it on a dish towel, which just helps kind of slide it in and out of the refrigerator. So after the cake has chilled for 30 minutes, it's time to add another layer of the American buttercream. I'm going for a rustic, semi-naked finish on this cake. When I say semi-naked, that means that a little bit of the cake is going to be exposed through the frosting. For this type of cake, I really like that look, and this is actually a really good way to start if you haven't had a lot of experience decorating cakes. There's less pressure of having that super smooth, even buttercream finish, so I would suggest trying this cake if you're just starting out. When I am satisfied with the look of the cake, I let it chill for 30 minutes and then I pull it out and decorate it. So I reserved a few of the best looking halves of pears because I'm gonna use that to decorate the top. And I'm also gonna use some of that caramel that I used in the buttercream. And I just wanna make sure that you understand that the, the caramel needs to be the perfect temperature. It can't be super scalding hot from the microwave because it will melt the buttercream. So you just wanna make sure that it is cool enough to drizzle onto the buttercream. And I just do a nice little drizzle uh, motion in a circle and then I piped some buttercream on the top of the cake to kind of hold the pear in place. I did notice the pear was sliding so I used a toothpick to set it in place. Just a tip if you are going to make this cake and leave it with somebody and use toothpicks make sure to let them know that there are toothpicks in the cake so they can remove them before slicing. So I decided to use two of the pear halves and I arranged them as best as I could on the top and this is the final result of the cake. I think it turned out beautiful. I let the cake chill for a little bit. If you make this in advance and the cake has been in the refrigerator for a few hours you want to take it out at least 45 minutes to an hour before serving to allow the buttercream to get back to room temperature and then you can slice and enjoy and look at how beautiful that looks you can see that delicious moist cake with the layers of the ermine buttercream and the chunks of pear This cake turned out even better than I thought it would. I know that this recipe calls for a lot of steps, but honestly, they are all worth it. The cake itself is super moist and flavorful, and when you combine it with that not too sweet, creamy ermine buttercream, and then you get pieces of that poached pear, oh, it is delicious. 
I hope you try this recipe soon. I am so proud of the way this cake turned out. It is my ode to the forgotten fall fruit, the pear. And I think I do a good job of making the pear the star of this dessert. If you do try this recipe, let me know in the comments what you thought. If you have questions about this recipe, put them in the comments. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much for watching, but before you leave, I have a tip on how to store your cakes once they are cut. I like to add a piece of plastic wrap just to the inside of the cake where the cake is exposed. This will help keep the cake nice and moist as it is stored in the refrigerator and you can store this cake in the refrigerator for up to five days. Not that I think it'll last that long because this is delicious and you're going to eat it all up. All right. Thank you so much for watching and have a sweet day. Thank you.